Long ago, in the old world, a young Wyvarian came into moderate fame. He was not known by his name, but by his accomplishments as a proficient monster hunter. His weapons of choice were the dual blades. Like most people in their youth, he was proud and reckless, and full of ambition in his dreams of becoming a master monster hunter. Each successful hunt fueled his ego to the point where he felt unstoppable. Thanks to his contributions to the hunting community, monster hunting was getting more and more popular amongst the common folk, as it was considered a niche profession at the time. Despite being small in stature, the young Wyvarian inspired many bigger and taller than himself to pursue hunting as a career. They later championed him as the hero of Kokoto. How he came to earn that title is a tale that ironically marked the end of his hunting career. This story is none other than the one-horned wyvern of Mount Kokoto. There lived the flying wyvern that roamed the lands of Kokoto. Standing at over five meters tall, it wore a wide frill overhanging the back of its head and bore a large single horn on its forehead, a horn that was so deadly that it could impale a hunter in one blow, killing them instantly. It went by the name of Monoblos and became a haunting terror to those who dared to venture outside of Kokoto village. Rising up to the challenge, the young Wyvarian accepted the quest to defeat Monoblos. Together with his fellow free hunters, the plan was to set out to the old desert where the one-horned wyvern was last sighted. To the young Wyvarian, the hunt seemed like an omen for good things to come, as he was soon to marry his fiancée shortly afterwards. His soon-to-be wife was also a huntress who was said to be more beautiful than the brilliance of polished white crystals. On the day of the quest, the fiancée insisted on joining the hunt. Initially, the young Wyvarian hesitated to take her as the mission was too dangerous and the hunting party was already full. The fiancée wouldn't hear any of it and further pressed him to let her join. Out of respect for his love as a hunter, he finally agreed to let her come along. And so the five hunters embarked on what was to be their last hunting quest together. The battle with Monoblos took place on the dead ground of the old desert where the air was hot and dry. The hunters fought relentlessly under these harsh conditions. Their blades bounced countlessly off the hard skin of the wyvern, each time chipping away a small spike or piece of flesh. Despite their efforts, Monoblos would not back down and in response sent ear deafening screams that would halt the hunters at their feet. Its frill would flare blood red as it aimed its horn at the hunters, charging at them even faster than before. The hunters learned quickly to avoid monsters whenever they were in a blood-filled rage, and so evaded the monster at all costs. This furious dance between the hunters and Monoblos went on for over seven days, up until when the food supplies ran out at their camp outpost. Exhausted and demoralized, the other hunters were ready to leave the hunting grounds, but the young Wyvarian was prepared to die fighting. He gripped his swords and walked on to face the final battle. In one spectacular blow, the young Wyvarian was able to break off the horn of Monoblos. This marked a turning point for the battle, as the hunters pressed on to slay the monster. Standing on top of the slain beast, with sword in hand, he raised a horn up in the air to signal victory. Proud of his latest accomplishments, he looked towards his fellow hunters, only to find that one of them was lying on the ground. It was his fiancée. Blinded by his strong desire to kill the Monoblos, he did not realize that his fiancée had died in the middle of battle. Upon returning home, the people of Kokoto celebrated their victory and championed the hunters as the heroes of Kokoto. From this very moment onwards, the hunting profession gained further traction as a commonly accepted profession. It was also from this very moment 
that a new code amongst hunters came to fruition. No more than four hunters are allowed to go on a hunting quest, for it was believed that hunters lose their companions when five or more people are in a group. This rule was set in stone out of respect for the young librarian's sacrifice. He had gained the title of a hero at the cost of losing his dearly beloved. Stricken by irreplaceable pain and sorrow, our hero laid down his sword. His hunting days were over, as the loss of his fiancée became his awakening. Centuries have gone by, and the hero of Kokoto had gone into early retirement, becoming the chief of Kokoto village that we know today. Contrary to his ambitious youth, he appears calm, collected, and most of all, humble. He rarely speaks with emotion, and instead, chooses to share wisdom and advice with hunters of both new and old. He understands the everyday pains of a hunter, and for this reason, manages Kokoto Village like it is a hometown for hunters. Hunters visiting Kokoto Village are welcome to stay, as the village itself is now a society centered around hunting. A replica of his sword, now known as the Hero's Blade, can be found pierced deep into the ground on the outskirts of the village. Those worthy enough to receive his blessing can pull the sword out of the ground to test their proof of a hero against the monoblos. The sword itself is accompanied with a shield, perhaps to remind the village chief of his past mistakes, for had he carried a shield with him on that fateful day, he might have been able to save his fiancée. Such is the life of a hunter. Thanks for watching. This is a lore video that I would consider highly speculative, but also in tune with the source material. If you enjoyed this video, and would like to see more content like this, please give a like and subscribe. I'm aiming to make a video once a week covering games like Resident Evil and Monster Hunter. See you all in the next video.